Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. This is All Saints Sunday, November the 7th, 2021, and this is Our Savior Lutheran Church in Jamaica, Queens, New York City. Welcome to each and every one of you. All Saints Sunday is the day that we remember all the saints of our lives, those who have died in the faith. And today we will recognize your special saints in our prayers. So stick around for that part of worship. You also might want to watch for a few important announcements at the end of this video. But that means that we begin our worship right now. I'm gonna go get changed and I'll be right back and we'll begin with a word of prayer. Hold on tight. And now that I'm ready for worship, let us gather ourselves for worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we worship, and however we worship this day, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith, commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who love you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let's start the music with 10,000 Reasons. Oh, my soul, worship is 
morning church our gospel lesson for this all saints sunday comes to us from the gospel of john reading from the 11th chapter where jesus through the raising of lazarus offs the world a vision of the life to come a time when death and weeping will be no more here's our lesson when mary came where jesus was and saw him she knelt at his feet and said to him lord if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep, so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stent because he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said that, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Here's the end of our lesson. The fundamental fact of our faith is this. Jesus is Lord of the living and the dead. By him, the dead receive new life, and through faith in him, the living never die. Jesus says, I am, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. So, what do we say to this? What do we say to this? What do we say when things are going badly for us? What do we say when people around us are plunged into despair? What do we say when the world around us is falling apart? Do we, do we give up hope, just like Mary and Martha did? Do we say with them, or maybe I should say, do we shout out to God, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died? Or, or do we wait? Do we wait in trust? Do we wait in hope for the next loving and powerful act of our God? So, how about you? Do you ever despair? Do you ever think that you've been forever cut off from the land of blessing? Do you ever think that your hope is gone? 
Do you ever think that everything around you is rotten? Do you ever think that your life has been in the grave too, too long, and it stinks? Do you feel that your life might as well be over for all the difference it would make? Of course, of course you have those feelings. We all do at some point. We all have those feelings. We all have those times when we feel dried up when we feel like, like shaking our fists at God and shouting, Lord, Lord, if you had been here. Those times when we feel like all hope is lost. That's why we have these scriptures. That's why we have these sacraments. To remind us, to help us to remember, and to help us keep from giving up. We all need to hear, we all need to hear the acts of a powerful God, the acts of a mighty Lord, the acts of an almighty God who has power, power over more than just a couple of fancy snake charming tricks like Mary and Martha thought, but a God, a God who has the power, the power over life and death, a God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, we all need to be reminded, even I need to be reminded, of just who it is that I believe in and what it is that he can do and does do. We all need to be reminded, just like how Jesus reminds the people of Bethany by showing them that not only could he heal the sick, but he could also raise the dead. Even if you only feel dead inside, Jesus can raise the dead. And Mary and Martha are just like us, so like us in so many ways. You know, they'd seen Jesus in action many times, and yet they still limited him. They still locked him out of certain areas of their lives even though they said to him with the deepest sincerity, Lord, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. But really, what do these words mean? What do these words mean if they don't mean that Jesus has power over everything? Even when Jesus finally arrives at the tomb and commands that the stone be taken away, Martha still doesn't understand. Martha still protests because Lazarus has been dead for four days and the stink will be awful. Of course, you got to know that that's my favorite part of this lesson. As we move from the shortest verse in scriptures, Jesus wept to the funniest, I think. Roll away the stone. No way. He's going to stink. Or as the King James Version says, and I love this even better, Lord, he stinketh. She believes in Jesus, as do I, as do so many. But she doesn't quite believe enough. And she limits Jesus. She locks him up. But it's with that command of Jesus that life begins. That command to roll away the stone. Because, well, that's where we need to start. By rolling away the stone. Rolling away the stone of whatever it is that keeps us from believing more fully. Rolling away the stone that holds us back. Whatever stone keeps us locked up or keeps the door of whatever tomb we hang out in locked up in, closed and shut, and we can't get out. Roll away the stone and come out, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? Jesus said, I am the resurrection, but he also said, I am the life. 
I am the life to those who believe. To those who believe, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Not just life eternal, not just life everlasting, but the life right now. This is our faith, this is our truth, and this is the truth that we need to be reminded of every once in a while. We need to be reminded so we don't fall back into despair. We need to be reminded so we don't dwell in anger and grief more than we ought. And if we can't, if we will not refuse to or just can't make that leap of faith, and we end up sitting in whatever tomb we have created, and after a while, what happens? Well, you know, we stinketh. And trust me, that ain't life, is it? You know, Sunday after Sunday, you come here, whether it's here in church or you come here to watch these videos, and you ask the same question. The question is the same question is asked in our gospel. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Does it do any good in the grand scheme of things? We ask where God is, and Jesus counters with, do you believe it? Roll away the stone and come out, because that is our faith, and that's where we got to start, at the tomb. We must come out, come forth, come out and roll away the stone. Come out and be unbound. And maybe, just maybe, that unbinding is the hardest part. So here's my question for today. What has you bound? What is it that keeps you from experiencing the life-giving power of the living God? What is it that keeps you tied up, too bound up to move, too bound up to live, too bound up to serve? What is it that has you wrapped too tight, so tight that you cannot move and you can't even breathe? Is it anger? Is it frustration? Are you mad at church, mad at me, mad at God? Are secrets and lies burning a hole in your heart? Is your body failing you? Have you experienced a loss so deep that you feel you cannot recover? Well, whatever it is, here's the starting point. Hear the word of the Lord shouting, come out. Come out of the tomb. Come out and let the power of God unbind you, surround you and hold you and breathe the breath of life into you. You see, God frees us from those graves too. God frees us from those tombs too. God releases us from being wrapped up and God gives us breath. God unbinds us. God rolls away the stone so that we can come out and live. So here's the thing. Remove the things that bind the hands and the feet of your souls. Give thanks that God is not done with you yet, but God is calling you onward from death to life, from the restrictions of the tomb in which you once dwelt to the light of a new day. Come out of the tomb. Be unbound. Hear the word of God as Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. They who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone, everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Wow! But do you believe it? Amen. Let's continue with the music this morning with a new one for us. Blessed be your name. I hope you enjoy it.
Bless it be your name. Bless it be your name. When I'm found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness, bless it be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Oh, there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness is in Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer to you this All Saints Day. Let us pray. Lord, we pray this day for people everywhere who are in poverty, who are struggling with disease, who are hurting for enough food to eat. Lord, help us be better stewards of what you have given us, so the unnamed saints in our world might never have to fight just to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in Jesus, you bring healing to our world. Reveal to all the depths of your love. Accompany all who suffer in mind, in body, or in spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. We pray especially this day for Paro and Doris, Maureen and Troy, Tariq and Ruth, Danny and Rita, Anita and Jessica, Gwendolyn and Charles. We also pray for those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy God, on this day, we remember your mighty acts in the lives of so many who now see your promises face to face. Hold them in your arms, Lord, 
as we remember them before you this day. We remember Sydney Uriah and Paul J. Uriah, remembered by Bibi Uriah and her family. Naomi Bonds, remembered by Walter Bonds. Srimati Juram, remembered by Dennis Ishak and his family. Rudy Sankar, remembered by Mahani Sankar. Andrew and Zabita Harrigan, remembered by Carol Harrigan. Roland Harrigan and Clint Charles, remembered by Jane Farry and Rasho Harrigan. Gina Pimento, Emily and Albert Tross, remembered by Norma Pimento. Tyler and Drupati Autar, remembered by Claude, Claude Autar. Punama and Franklin Dalatram, remembered by Anne and Anthony and Diapin. Neville Raya and Satnarain Srinarain, remembered by Mary Iraya. Anil Prasad and Mir Mira Dukaran, remembered by Bibi and Maya Prasad. Samuel Ranjitan Sr., Clive, May, and Alex Mandel, all remembered by Evelyn Mandel. Dana and Sukraj Tulsi, remembered by Amy, Kiran, Davy, and Ethan Tulsi. Desmond Bascom and Desiree Bahadur, remembered by Lindsay and Catherine Bascom. All the loved ones in the life of Jean Singh. Andrew and Zabita Harrigan, remembered by Anil, Shirley, Leah, and Ashton Singh. Randy Singh and Clint Charles, remembered by Anil, Shirley, Leah, and Ashton Singh. Chetram Ramkaran, remembered by Flavius and Bianca Pastano. Roxanne Singh, remembered by Babsy Ragabir. All the loved ones in the life of Paul and Beatrice Ramraj. Bob and Michelle Foster, remembered by the Foster family. Sabita and Leslie Guthrie, remembered by Terry and Elaine Guthrie. Filbert Peters and Sukri Peters, remembered by Terry and Elaine Guthrie. Cheryl Joquim, remembered by Terry and Elaine Guthrie. Sunil Danraj and Teresa Kelly, remembered by Christina Hudro. Her parents, her sisters, and her brothers, remembered by Joan Plummer Persaud. Stephen John, remembered by Joyce John and her family. Simon and Jane John, remembered by Joyce John and her family. Alfonso Brown, remembered by Lynette Brown. Joan Campbell, remembered by Dolores Campbell and her family. Again, Joan Campbell, remembered by Sybil Dow. Holly Mohammed and Joanna Dipnerine Singh, remembered by Elisa Dipnerine Singh. Leon Sandpaul, remembered by Patsy, David, and Melissa Sandpaul. All the loved ones in the life of Anjani Tulsi. Noor and Bibi Ahmed, as remembered by the Guthrie family. John and Cheryl Joquin, remembered also by the Guthrie family. Leslie and Sabita Guthrie, remembered by the Guthrie grandchildren. Teresa and Melissa Ramlochan, remembered by John Vieira and Chan Prasad. Herman and Elsa Gomes, remembered by Neil and Jennifer Pierre. Norma and Sydney Pierre, also remembered by Neil and Jennifer Pierre. John Angel, remembered by Miko Zakshuski. John and Cheryl Joquin, remembered by Janine and Janelle Joquin. Frank Lochensing, remembered by Ed Lochensing and family. Claude and Nesha Thomas, remembered by Brian Thomas. Mr. and Mrs. Shivnandan, remembered by Anne Kumari Thomas. Amzad Rohan and Jean Thomas, 
remembered by Brian Thomas. Joseph Mohabir, remembered by Bert Lindy. Peter Artiga and James Lindy, remembered by Anita Lindy. Gildermina Dardeen, remembered by Ty, Tia, and Gita Lung. George Jandu, remembered also by Ty, Tia, and Gita Lung and Sandra Jandu. Ophelia and Anselma Picardo, remembered by Kathy DeBasey. All the loved ones in the life of Ronald and Ivy Candesani. Oswald Hall and Vito Giamanco, remembered by the Giamanco family. Oswald Law, remembered by Ramona Law. RCP, remembered by Priscilla Bagason. Roger McBain and Melissa McBain, remembered by Christina McBain. Eric Paul and Shelley Cruikshank, remembered by the Cruikshank and the Paul families. Reverend and Mrs. Paul Jagdar, remembered by Irene Jagdar. Suji and Darsha Diokananen, remembered by Nadia Diokananen. Hector Lorenzo, remembered by Yolanda Powers. All the loved ones in the life of Mohan and Sally Sugnandan. Rukmin and Puran Sanachar, remembered by Rina Iraya. Elizabeth and Andrew Ramkasum, remembered by Arnold Nirvana and Miriam Ramkasum. Mr. and Mrs. Alberto Bassana Sr., Jose Nepomuceno, and Alberto Bassana III, remembered by G. and Hannah Nepomuceno. Frederick Dalatran, remembered by Anne and Anthony and Diapin. Punama Dalatran, remembered by Anne and Anthony and Diapin. We pray for them this day, as well as those who are unnamed but remembered in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, look with love on our sorrows, comfort us with your goodness, and give us peace in our mourning. These things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, before the announcements, receive God's benediction. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being right where you are. Christ, who indwells you by the power of his Spirit, wants to do something in and through you. Believe this and go in his grace, his love, and his power in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, as promised, a few announcements. I want to give you some calendar things, but I also want to thank everyone who gave so generously to the Abiding Memorial Fund and had the names of their loved ones read in the prayers this Sunday. Thank you to all of you. Next Sunday is Harvest Sunday, November the 14th. But a reminder that this year there will be no auctions, so please do not bring in your harvest fruits and breads and things like that. Next year, we hope, we hope we can get back to normal. And finally, the all new Christmas schedule is now up on the church website. You might wanna check that out because it is pretty different from years before. Now, before we say goodbye this day, may you be blessed this week. We hope to see you soon. 
right here at Our Savior Lutheran Church in the heart of the Borough of Queens in New York City. For now, we sing one more, one more favorite, He Leadeth Me. Y'all take care. See you soon. Even then